Okay, hi folks. Uh, thank you so much for streaming. And um, this uh, seventh episode of Yumioto Hanashi features BM Max from New Zealand, the author of Anna Hera, book one of The Isle of Storms, and the upcoming second book, Pariah. Thank you, uh, thank you for joining here, Vian. So can you introduce us to self briefly? Hmm. Okay, I am Vian Max, yes. and I am a writer who was born in Scotland, but I grew oh. up in Aotearoa, New oh. Zealand. Oh, I see. So you were originally mm -hmm. from British, I see. Yes. I see. And uh, so the... Uh... So your book is called Anahera, and when I googled, mm -hmm. uh, it says the uh, angel in New Zealand. Is this correct? Yes, in Te Reo Maori, um, mm -hmm. it's the word for angel. It's, it has sort of extra meanings, but that's. Mm -hmm. I just thought it would be um, a really good thing to describe or to mm -hmm. use to describe people who come from one world to another. Ah, ah, ah mm -hmm. yes, yeah, those kind of uh, transcending world is pretty important mm -hmm. uh, factor in Noah. So the, uh, first of all, can you share your latest accomplishment or your temporary goals that you would like to reach? Um, my latest accomplishment, I can't say the word, accomplishment <laughs> is um, mm -hmm. finishing Pariah, which is book uh -huh. two. Book two, I see. Um, mm -hmm. And having the lovely Cranthorpe Milner Publishing House in the UK mm -hmm. publish it. Um, so we're just, mm -hmm. yeah. So they're just we're just working through the like the edits, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully it will come out sometime near the beginning of next year. So okay. I'm really, mm -hmm. I struggled with this one a little bit. So I'm really pleased to have finished it. Uh, uh, how long did you take to finish it? About a year and a half. Oh, that is pretty long, a year and a half. <laughs> because some <laughs> authors finish each story uh, only like a three or four months. So that's why some I know. write. <laughs> I <laughs> just, I have huge respect for that. I so. see, I see. And uh, can you briefly describe your work, uh, this Anna, Anna, Anna Hair series? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is about a woman who travels from oh, accidentally oh. from um, our world to a completely different world. Oh. Um, mm -hmm through a gate that is opened during a midsummer's party. Um, and it's how she survives in that world. Um, but I love worlds that are filled with sight and smell and texture and sounds. So my work tends to have um, all of those kind of things in it as well. So the magic, for instance, is magic. magic. Yeah. I see. Um, so every time someone uses a piece of magic themselves, mm -hmm. then you can smell it. They have their own personal scent. Uh, so did you get any uh, influence from those uh, role-playing games? Um, I have traveled a lot, just oh, like you my family. <laughs> so I traveled all over the world and I want to keep going. And I'm just fascinated by markets oh. and perfumes mm -hmm. and food, music, you know, all sorts of different elements of culture so that is pretty interesting you saw the real things i see yeah uh-huh and uh does your story involve those kind of uh fighting scenes or monsters or yes um there are a number of battle scenes mm -hmm. um some of them are individual personal ones and some uh -huh. of them are full of you know two groups of people uh -huh. fighting uh -huh. mm -hmm. um i have always been, <laughs> been interested in weapons I come from quite a military family on one Aww. side. Um, so I do try to consult with them as well when I'm writing a battle scene. Oh, that is very interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Your family is a consultant. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you brainstorm when composing a new scenes, dialogues, characters, conflicts, and so on? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, it just... I work through it quite often when I'm walking my dog, Ink, uh -huh. who appears uh -huh. on my Twitter account quite a lot. So mm. um, when I'm walking Ink, I have music on very loud. Mm. And it just that motion and the music and that helps me work through the scenes. Um, the other thing I try to do when I'm writing either scenes like battles or um, dialogue conversation mm -hmm. is I try and get into each of the characters as they uh -huh. speak. So I kind of Characters sink in mm -hmm. their way of speaking or their mm -hmm. physical kind of person. And I may look like a crazy person if anyone was to watch me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the dialogue is going to be organic, is it? 
Exactly. So I, I want it to feel like each person is genuinely speaking. So you have to kind of get into their mindset and how they would speak and how they would react and how they would physically move whilst they were speaking. And so. uh, that's how you engage your uh, readers. Mm. Mm-hmm. I see. And what was your major influence? Um, that that was that's a difficult question because mm-hmm. it's pretty much <laughs> I. I think, though, my father loves science fiction and fantasy uh-huh. fiction. <laughs> so there were piles of books around our house when I was growing up. Um, so, and some of them were art books as well. So there was animation, there's, you know, and music and that. So that kind of thing, I think, pulled me into those kind of worlds. Oh, I see. So uh, your father is kind of a big influence to you. Yeah. I see. Uh huh. And, um, So what is your writing advice? I actually take it from Neil Gaiman. Gaiman, I never know how to say his name, um, Mm. who co-wrote Good Omens, um, in that just write whatever's in your head, just get it out (laughs) and down (laughs) on the page. And that's what I tell my students. I'm a high school teacher of English. (laughs) Um, And so I'm just like, whatever it is, just get it down on the page and then you can work on that and develop it or move it around or whatever, just oh, write it down. I see. And uh, do your students knew, uh, know that you publish your book? Uh, yes, they're very supportive as well. Oh. <laughs> very, <laughs> very good students. Very good kids. <laughs> very sweet. I do because appreciate the, uh, it. <laughs> because some authors ch- don't, just don't want to uh, let the, <laughs> the students know they're publishing the book. I know. And my book too might be a little bit too spicy for spicy, teenagers. Spicy, spicy. <laughs> So I'm not going to let them read that one. <laughs> Not going to uh, advertise them. <laughs> nope. Um, yeah, but they are, they are really encouraging. And, right, and right, I right. Mm-hmm. get a lot of inspiration from oh, them as people as well, which is I really, see. really cool. So. Yes, that's great. So uh, next question is going to be a little tough because when composing an action sequence, um, do you first image it in your brain to visualize or toss words randomly on a blank page and start writing? Or do you have your own way? That's also a good question. Um, <laughs> I think I start to, because I love film Felt as fun. well, <laughs> um, I see everything very much like a film action sequence. So I, I kind of imagine it in my head, the sort of overview, <laughs> and then the sort of little bit by bit. <laughs> so, um, and then I try and do research. So I try and look up. Yes, we, you know, we do research. Video, <laughs> we need research. To see, you know, the best weapons, the best moves and uh-huh. so on that would suit each individual and what is physically possible. I know it's a magic world, but my main character doesn't have any magic. Hmm. So I need to know how she would react in that kind of situation, having never been in a battle before. Oh. So. Yes, yeah. Some of my uh, writer folks, uh, I was amazed that the, uh, they research about Japan very well, so they can distinguish uh, which is katana and what is, what is aikuchi or what is the uh, shuriken or something like that. So uh, mm-hmm. that's why they research pretty well, and uh, I'm uh, just aston- astonished by that. So uh, how about the uh, Japan? Are you interested in Japanese culture, or uh, if so, d- which uh, culture do you want to deep dive? Um, I really have always been interested in Japanese culture. Thank I you. did. Um a double degree at Auckland University um, Mm. in my babyhood Um, and it was English literature and East Asian studies so I studied the history culture and religions of Japan Korea um, and China Uh and it's just always um, everything about Japan so many different aspects of it I find (laughs) really (laughs) exciting and fascinating uh, so uh, do you want to go to uh, those hot springs in Japan? Yes, definitely. Yes, yes uh, it's uh, from <laughs> a natural one and uh, it's uh, you have to be naked in public, but <laughs> that is uh, that's a little bit challenging. <laughs> I don't think I want to do that to other human beings. Um, mm. so <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how about yeah, any favorite Japanese anime or manga? Yes, um, I'm slightly obsessed with Studio Ghibli. Uh, yes, we pronounce Ghibli actually. I was like, Yivi. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and like the first one I ever saw was mm-hmm. 
like I've seen a lot of I think when I was a child mm-hmm. I saw quite a lot of Japanese animation I think they had it quite often here dubbed in English um but the first one of that particular studio I saw was Spirited Away and uh-huh, I, Grace it, Fell. Mm-hmm. it's Sandwich one of my Grace Fell. Mm-hmm. favorite films ever so mm-hmm. Yes, uh, I actually have the tendency to watch Spirited, uh, Spirited Away in every summer uh, fall uh, without skipping. Because yeah, I, yes, uh, exactly. back, in, yes uh, back in 2001 summer, it was released in uh, July uh, 4 or 5 in Japan in 2001. And I was so fascinated and I, I went to watch theaters four times to watch that one. <laughs> and every yes. summer comes, I watch it. <laughs> Excellent idea. I watch it when... You know, I'm not feeling very happy or great or there's a storm outside or something uh-huh, like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's my go-to. Is yes, But it's it is. one of the things I love about their work is it's not just the stories and characters. It's the backgrounds, uh-huh. the exquisite art in the backgrounds, in yes, the uh, setting. Everything is handwritten. Mm-hmm. It's just incredible. It just blows me away. Every time I watch it, I see something new. And it doesn't matter it which is. one of their films it is. It, I just love it. Yes, I see. And uh, how about the, uh, can you name any famous Japanese person that impacted you the most? Um, Probably, I apologize for the pronunciation. Um, is it Hayao Miyazaki? Hayao Miyazaki. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he was, he's probably was quite a challenging person at times, mm-hmm. but yes, he is. The, way that he sees the world in terms of his creativity and takes things from all over the place you know all over our world as well um and the ideas he has that he wants to get across you know they're just so interesting so i think he's quite inspirational in that respect in terms of being creative Yes, I cannot believe he's already over 80 years old, but uh, he's still making new films. And uh, it could be his too. Oh, so it uh, looks like uh, we're kind of running out of time. So uh, let's wrap, uh, wrap up. So any message to those watching this uh, interview? Um, I would just say, write, be creative, and help one another out, including other creatives. Yes, the, uh, I'm very thankful to those uh, beta readers for me, and because beta readers mm-hmm. always give the good suggestions, and yeah. that's why uh, vice versa, I'll try to read the work, and we kind of mm-hmm. exchange feedback, and this is pretty uh, interesting uh, activity for uh, among writers, I think. Yes, I think it's a brilliant idea. And finally, I love my beta. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so finally, uh, what is the most encouraging phrase that you recite when you want to pump up your motivation or crawl out from rock bottom? <laughs> um mine is more of a, a surfing thing so i imagine that i'm on a surfboard and oh, they're away okay. and i just think whenever there's a rough wave like a bad experience that you're trying to pull yourself up of i think float so that idea of floating up over that rough floating wave up. and then back down because even the bad stuff or the stuff that isn't working it will pass mm-hmm. in the end like and the also, way. yes, also even bad experiences can be good source of writing, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's you a, never know they're yeah. going to take you. So yeah, we can create those uh, very good conflict scenes, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so the her book series is called Anna Hera. Thank you very much, Bian. Uh, so, folks, uh, if you're interested in Bian, please pick her works and follow her account. Oh, folks, uh, she sometimes tweets beautiful pictures of New Zealand, so don't <laughs> miss those. And I truly appreciate your participation in this segment, Bian. I wish you great success, and we'll keep in touch. Thank you very much. Thank I really appreciate. Much. Thank you. Mm-hmm.